Carol Love from Live 101.5, and I have my friend Jen here from SeaWorld, and I'm told that you brought some animal friends with I you. I did. You know, it's summer nights starting in May 23rd, so okay. we thought we'd bring some animals to Phoenix to hopefully get you guys excited to come to yeah. San Diego. And our first one, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Tess, Tess, and she is a two-toed sloth which is one of the slowest moving mammals on earth. Really? Yes, yeah, so you can see as she's going on to her perch here, she is kind of slow moving. <laughs> and um, she is one of our beautiful so animal ambassadors. Cool. And she gets the name two-toed. If you look at those two toes right there in front, there are also oh, yeah. a species called the three-toed sloth as well. Um, and all of them are found in Central or in South America. Um, they're found up in the rainforest areas as well. Let's see if she wants to eat something. Want to see if you want to. Just kind of put it right in front of her, her mouth right there. And she should grab right onto it. <laughs> <laughs> so how many sloths do you have? I we have know. one sloth at our park at SeaWorld okay. San Diego. Um, and she's found over in our Animal Connections area. So when folks come down the, um, from here, come out to uh, SeaWorld, definitely come by what's called Animal Connections. It's, it, it's our old converted barn that oh, all of our cool. animal ambassadors are at now. We have sloths and porcupines and Asian water monitor, all these different animals that will come out and interact with people so they can get up close and personal and make a unique connection. Like it's what you just, just did. It's, <laughs> it's not, not just, just whales. It's not just whales. It's all animals of the world. That's what oh we're really excited gosh. about when we, uh, when we work at SeaWorld and what we do. It's just kind of cool. So cute. I think I'm going to have Mary come and take a little test because I can see she's going to want to come out and grab. She has those long arms and she's just going to kind of go for everything. So while that's going on, we have another really cool animal that we brought oh. here. This one. <laughs> I don't know about snakes. Ah, okay, that's good. You, you're kind of scared of snakes, right? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so then you're not scared of this because this is a lizard. Oh, it, but there's no legs. <laughs> right, it's a European legless lizard. Wow. Like I kind of feel and I'll keep this front in here, but I can hold on to him. So what does he feel like? Oh, warm. Well, not slimy or anything. Nope, yeah, not no. slimy at all. And that's, you know, all reptiles, a lot of people think that when the scales and everything, that, oh, it must be slimy because of how it moves. Right. But it's not. They are very smooth animals, obviously. Um, and you were right about it doesn't have its legs. And But one of the nice things about this particular species is, well, her name is Shakira. And it goes <laughs> for the fact that her hips don't lie because she has hip bones. If you were actually wow. taking an x-ray of her, you would see the pelvic bone. So if you look right here, See that line? Yes. That she has ends right there? Mm -hmm. That is the end of her body. So think two legs here and two legs here, or maybe here and here. And this is yeah. all tail? And that's all tail. <laughs> <laughs> oh Pretty cool, right? That is so cool. And so this is kind of neat that this is a, a type of lizard. You can find these lizards also here in the United States, not just in Europe. And right. you never know what you might find in your own backyard. And so we like to encourage kids if they come to camps at SeaWorld that you're going to learn and explore nature in your own your own backyard. Yeah, definitely. And to be aware of it. So. Oh so this is Ruby, and she is an eastern screech owl. And uh, eastern screech owls here in the um, western part of the United States, so anything past um, the Mississippi West, you're going to be able to see the western screech owls. So we have those here in, in Arizona and in, and in California. But this is an eastern, so this one is actually found was found in Florida. Wow. Um, but this is the smallest of the eared owls, ear tufted owls, those little ears that she has on the top, but those really aren't her ears. It's just kind of more of a, uh, I won't say decoration, but it helps her in her environment to kind of look like she's bigger than what she really is. Um, do and you have any other owls at SeaWorld too? Yes, we do. We have also have the largest species, which is the uh, Eurasian eagle owl. Best of both worlds then. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And also to speak to the fact that this is, we're talking about backyards and what you can find in your backyard. Right. One of the things about this particular species or this particular owl that they do nest in people's backyards. And what happened with this particular owl in Florida was someone's probably trimming their trees in their backyard in the springtime, which most people would do. Right. That's not necessarily the best time to trim because she was a fledgling that fell in the nest, not knowing that there was a nest in that tree. And so when they found her, it was determined by veterinarians that she could not be returned. And so um, a facility, a rescue facility in Florida, took uh, the bird in and was caring for it. And it's a facility that SeaWorld Bush Gardens Conservation Fund actually works with. Oh, that's awesome. Us. And so we were able to talk with them and realize, you know, we would love to give her a forever home and be, be an animal ambassador for she us. She is so cute. Isn't she? And also so speaks fabulous. to all the varieties of, of rescues that we have. And one of the things that, um, she looks look the other way, right? I know. I'm just, I'm not looking straight ahead, um, is we have a lot of rescues going on right now at SeaWorld as well really? that are not just the birds either. We have um, California sea lions are 
um, are stranding on, along the beach um, all up and down California. And right now we have rescued more than 650 sea lions. Wow. Which is record numbers, unfortunately. And the reason for this is basically most of them are just coming in malnourished. They okay. are, they're just too young, they're, they're not even a year old yet. They're not strong enough to go find their prey, most likely out, out in the wild. So they're coming in basically like they're wearing pajamas. I mean, you can oh. see their ribs, everything about it is, it's, it's heartbreaking, it really is. However, that's what we've been doing, rescuing, rehabilitating animals for more than 50 years. And this has been something that we, we want to help. And we've been out there rescuing, we will continue to rescue these animals as long as they need our help. So SeaWorld can help save some animals. Some of them can go back and other ones you can't. You guys can maybe help provide Well, our, our number one goal is to rescue, rehabilitate, and return. Of course there will be, but like Ruby here, there might mm -hmm. be some where a veterinary decided, you know, if this animal would not, it's not safe for that animal to be returned. So at that point, we will find a forever home. In some cases, it might be right at SeaWorld in, in one of our other parks. It might be another institution that, that accredited zoo or, or wherever that they can house and care for an animal for the rest of its life. And we have a lot of animals, um, not necessarily sea lions, but um, one of our very, uh, kind of well-known rescues is we have a, a beaver um, at beaver. the animal. Yes, a rescue <laughs> beaver that uh, we were able to give a forever home to that is now part of our collection at SeaWorld. But it was an animal that if we did not um, help to find a new home for, um, that animal most likely would have been destroyed. So oh. in that case, we will do anything we can to help animals. If, if we're able to, we're going to. That's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to say goodbye here to Ruby. Because we've got some other fun animals. <laughs> 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 so, oh my god, right behind you. She's right behind here. So this is Apollo. Apollo. <laughs> now, what's Apollo, do you know? Are you looking? Okay, a lot of people think that, right? <laughs> um, but this is not a, a porcupine. This is actually a hedgehog. Hedgehog. Yeah, so this is an insectivore, a completely different species um, than the por porcupines. We actually have at SeaWorld as well, if you come down. <laughs> and we have the African crested porcupine, which are the largest species, very long um, quills. Um, the Hedgehogs, on the other hand, do not, they're not completely covered in the quills. They do have these very um, sharp spines, but you're more than welcome to feel. He's very relaxed right now, and you can really feel. <laughs> you hear him puffing? Yeah. So what he does is he's protecting his belly. You saw when Shannon put him down, how right. nice and soft it is underneath there. Whenever he feels threatened, he basically will get into a ball, and he's tightening his stomach muscles. And by tightening, these all get extremely straight and hard. And so if you go to try and touch, you won't be able, it's like a, a pin cushion. You cannot be able to <laughs> pick him up at all. Uh, so he has a great adaptation for living and protecting himself in his environment. But one of the things about these is a lot of people actually have these as pets. Really? Um, yeah, and they're an exotic animal. And what I like to tell people about having exotic animals like this is you really have to know, first of all, where you live in the world, because right. a lot of places in the United States if they're not an indigenous species, they may not be allowed to have them in your state or even in your city. So make sure you do your homework first. And also the fact that because he's not an indigenous species to the United States, if they, he was able to get loose, he has been competing with the natural animals that already live here. Um, so it's right. important to be aware of that when you think about those exotic pets. Oh my goodness, he is so cute. <laughs> so is he the only one that you have at SeaWorld? Right now, yes. Uh huh. And he was actually came from our sister park in um, Williamsburg. Oh my gosh, he's so cute and long. I love it. All right, so we have one more really fun animal that we're going to bring out. I know you said you like birds, right? Birds. Right? All right, so this is Ruby, and she's a really amazing bird. She Let's see if she'll come over. Right? She's Attitude. always talking. Ruby. There we go. All right. Good job, Ruby. Isn't she beautiful? Yes. So wait, what kind of bird did you say? This is a scarlet ibis, and a scarlet ibis, they're found in South America. Um, they're actually the national bird of Trinidad and Tobago, which is kind of cool, the beautiful colors that she has. Um, you can find ibis right here in the United States as well, like the white ibis in Florida. Okay. Um, they fly around all, they're very common. You can even see some migrations of the uh, scarlet ibis now coming up into the United States as well. But they're a shore bird, they're going to be, be around where there's going to be water. Um, they use that beautiful bill that she has, kind of like chopsticks. She takes it, able to pick up things and swallow food with it, but it's very sensitive, just like her fingertips. 
So okay. when she's feeling around, even if she can't see underneath the water, if it's muddy, she can still feel and determine, is it a rock or is it actually food? And she can swallow it without even looking at it. With so that, what kind of okay. things <laughs> does she normally like to eat? Um, she eats insects. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> and she also eats a lot of fish. Um, so maybe some frogs, um, crustaceans. Got a little <laughs> on your bill there. <laughs> Would you like her on your head? Sure. Why not? Oh, gosh. There we go. She's surprisingly Ta light. Yeah, right? Because she, she's a bird that has to fly in the use. there March. Um, I consider it luck. Think of it that way. It's really it's lucky that you had that happen to you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Daddy. You all for coming through and hanging out with us. Thanks for having us. <laughs>